Hey guys, it's Hink here. Today I'm going to be talking a pretty spicy take actually. Why I think Kegels are one of the single worst things recommended when it comes to male health and pelvic floor health. Today I'm going to break down exactly why they are so harmful, the science behind it, and how we can correct some of the damages done by Kegels. So stay tuned. Hey guys, thanks for joining. And so today we're going to be talking all about Kegels. Now, Kegels are one of those things that if you look at a lot of these guides, a lot of these men's health things, how to overcome erectile dysfunction, they recommend you do Kegels. What people don't realize is that they can actually be extremely harmful, especially when done incorrectly. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So to start, what is a Kegel? So have you ever been urinating and tried to stop your urine or being, been in the middle of like having a bowel movement, pooping, and then you kind of like close your anal sphincter to pinch off the turn, or you just get scared and your kind of pelvic floor tenses, that's a Kegel, guys. It's just constricting those pelvic floor muscles. And so that's all a Kegel is. And so people often recommend you do like sets of like literally constricting your pelvic floor. That can be very damaging. And so we're going to be talking about some of the pelvic floor anatomy so you can know what muscles are actually involved when it comes to Kegeling. Two of the most important ones, I think, are the ischiocavernosus muscle and the bulbospongiosus muscle, which I'll put up a little graph right here. So you can graph a picture so you can actually see what they look like and where they are located along the shaft of the penis. Um, so the ischiocavernosus muscle, if you haven't seen my video on a hard placid, I break down this anatomy. So this is going to be more like a brief review, but it, it constricts and it helps to keep blood flow in the penis, helps with an erection. And then the bulbospongiosus muscle also has a series of relaxing and constricting, which allows for actually ejaculation and erections. And so particularly if you've ever had an orgasm, you can actually feel that like pulsation, like as you ejaculate, that's your bulbospongiosus muscle constricting right there. There are also two additional muscles that I don't think, or three really, that I don't think are as important for our purposes, but are still important to talk about when it comes to Kegley. So those are going to be the pubococcygeus muscle, and I'll put up a picture here where you can see those there, the iliococcygeus muscle, and then of course the levator ani muscle, which is right around your anal canal that actually makes your sphincter constrict. And so they have different functions within the pelvic floor. For brevity in this video, I'm going to skip those, but know that they are up there. If you want to learn what they do, just Google them, guys. So I'm going to put up another graph here, and you can see that there's actually the bulbospongiosus muscle. I think that this is one of the more important muscles in the pelvic floor, especially when it comes to men's health, because uh, you can see that the actual dorsal nerve of the penis in this picture, it actually runs right through the bulbospongiosus muscle. And so if you do too many Kegels, what you can do is you can cause a like a hypertonicity, and uh, like an overly contracted bulbospongiosus muscle, which number one, it doesn't relax to allow blood flow in, so you don't get good erections. You can develop something called soft gland syndrome, when actually the glands or the head of your penis does not engorge with blood. Neither does the corpus cavernosum. The underside of the penis does not engorge with blood. And so you have poor erection quality there. You can also have it like obstruct arterial flow. And what can happen is you can actually cause hypertonicity around that actual nerve and it can actually cause nerve dysfunction. So it can lead to erectile dysfunction and it can lead to symptoms like nerve pain and pain within your pelvic floor. So the next important topic is like, when do you Kegel? Guys, we are Kegeling all the time. So if you're an otherwise relatively healthy male between the ages of like, honestly, like 14, but let's just say 18 for age, you know, appropriateness between the ages of 18 and like 60 guys, you're going to be kegling all you need to be kegling because you kegel when you urinate, you kegel when you have a bowel movement, you kegel during sex, you kegel during masturbation. And for any of my guys that are in here from the enlargement community, it's anything that's going to be like growth related, stimulating an erection, even just sometimes just touching the penis can lead to an involuntary Kegel. So guys, we don't need to be Kegeling that much because we already are Kegeling enough. There's no need for the excessive Kegeling with additional sets like places like Good Looking Loser or even, you know, to my dismay, you know, no offense, BD, but and the pumping guides, I think this was an older outdated pumping guides, but it said like, oh, when you pump, you should be Kegeling. And I had a guy that injured himself doing that. And it was like, oh, it was in the guide. And I was I felt really bad about that because, you know, truly there it was in the guide. But guys, we do not need to be kegling like that. We just don't. We get all we need through our natural motions. What was very validating for me is there's this guy on YouTube. I'll link his video here or his YouTube channel here, but he's called Neo Man. And he gives a lot of really good pelvic floor health, Peyronie's disease health, and even erection quality health information. And he hates kegling as much as I do. And he has several videos talking about how harmful Kegels can be. So guys, you know, a lot of you guys think I'm just some, you know, dumb guy that's sitting here in a mask ranting, but like, it's not just me. There's other thought leaders in this community that feel the same way I do. And in fact, there's even a pelvic floor physiotherapist, which we're going to talk about shortly. 
So like I mentioned, guys, why I don't like Kegels is because it can lead to a condition called a hypertonic pelvic floor. And so when you have a hypertonic, it means there's too much tone in the muscles. You're walking around and your pelvic floor is just clenched all day around your structures along the base of your penis and along your pelvic floor and even up into your back, okay? When that happens, you can cause things like erectile dysfunction. You can even cause things like urinary or bowel incontinence or, an, or constipation because when you have your muscle and it's just constricted the whole time, it doesn't have the ability to relax fully and it doesn't have the ability to contract fully and so you don't get full functionality of those pelvic floor muscles so you can have things like erectile dysfunction or even hypotonia or weak pelvic floor because your muscles are always in that constricted state guys and so it's very important that you don't kegel all the time it's almost like walking around and like you're just tensing your shoulders and then you don't even realize it and you get home and you're like why does my neck and back hurt and it's well because you've been tensing your shoulders all day it's very very similar principle guys another very important principle is something that's called premature ejaculation guys those muscles especially like bulbospongiosis muscle the ischio um, cavernosis muscle those muscles are strongly involved and in, you know directly involved with ejaculation and so if you are always primed those muscles are always primed you're going to be ready to ejaculate like this guys and so these guys that are doing these excessive kegels and they don't understand what happens when they all of a sudden de develop premature ejaculation it's because their pelvic floor is too constricted all the time so we really need to back off on that and reversely which i'll talk about when you do reverse kegels which you allow yourself to relax your pelvic floor you're going to actually be able to last longer and actually better control your orgasms and have increased blood flow into the penis so another, we call it a condition, but it's really a series of symptoms, which I've talked about before. It's called hard flaccid. If you haven't seen my video, I'll put up a little bloop here. You really need to watch that video, even if you don't have hard flaccid, because I talk in detail about pelvic floor anatomy and basically ways to improve pelvic floor health, blood flow, erectile quality, etc. But hard flaccid can be literally directly caused by having an overly constricted pelvic floor that is imbalanced because you're constricting it all the time and you're doing these sets of exercises where you're just squeezing your pelvic floor all the time, guys. So heart flaccid can literally be caused by an overly constricted pelvic floor. So a lot of you guys, no, hopefully not a lot of you guys, but some of you guys think I like overreact to stuff. And so I want you to, to I'm going to read to you um, and I'm going to put the link below of an actual pelvic floor specialist, a pelvic floor physiotherapist that actually put together a very nice article about why you should not be kegeling all the time. So I'm just going to read it, guys, okay? Why is pelvic floor hyper, hypertonicity so bad? Constantly using your kegel muscles, even to a mild degree, can lead to a muscle strain, muscle fatigue, muscle pain, discomfort with exercise, painful sexual intercourse. It can also contribute to muscle knots or trigger points. These are small parts of hypertonic muscle that have difficult time relaxing and are tender to the touch. Sometimes a tight pelvic floor can make it difficult to completely empty the bladder or initiate a urine stream and contribute to constipation. Finally, holding your muscles in a shortened and tightened position can lead to weakness because the muscle doesn't relax fully. It seems uh, it never really gets the opportunity to squeeze fully. It kind of stays on to a small degree most of the time, never really relaxing and never really being well used. For this reason, I sometimes see people who have a hypertonic pelvic floor that is also weak and causes incontinence, guys. That's an actual specialist telling you the same thing that I'm telling you. So I'm not just pulling this out of my butt. A lot of my guys are over here from the PE community, the enlargement community, guys. Uh, I mentioned this before, but clamping under pressure, clamping and then doing Kegels voluntarily or involuntarily, meaning you might not even be aware of it. That's how I injured myself. I didn't even realize I was clamping and doing Kegels. I got severe, small, uh, soft gland syndrome for about two weeks that fortunately I was able to correct through some of the techniques I'm going to talk about shortly. Pumping, I think, is safer, um, but I still do not recommend Kegeling, um, especially not doing dedicated sets of Kegels while you're in the pump. You know, you have an involuntary Kegel here and there, that's probably fine, but doing sets, not a good idea, guys. And like I said, any kind of girth work, especially where there's any kind of touch or sensation on your penis, there's a high likelihood you're going to Kegel, guys, so be very careful. And so, guys, Vigor's back in stock. It's an Amazon. It's getting amazing reviews. I specifically dedicated myself to figuring out an uh, excellent formula that's going to maximize blood flow, maximize nitric oxide, nitric oxide synthase, and basically giving you the best erection quality you can, the best workouts with this, but also minimizing any chance of things like long-term endothelial damage, overall maximizing penis health, okay? If you're interested, check it out. It's on Amazon or on Leviathan Wellness, or excuse me, LeviathanSupps.com. Then, of course, we have our virility. This is sold out. Um, it is coming back in stock. 
stay tuned because um, it increases your semen quality, semen taste, and semen volume, guys. It's, it's a wonderful formula. I use it all the time, okay? So who needs to actually Kegel? So older guys uh, that have weak pelvic floors just from age and neglect, guys that are recovering from major pelvic surgery like prostate cancer, and I, you'll see, put up a paper right there where you can see that. Some guys specifically with erectile dysfunction, okay? And so uh, I'll put up also a link to the Cleveland Clinic, which addresses some of these factors, okay? If you are concerned, you need to go see a doctor if you think you might have a weak pelvic floor because there's different things like phonometry and they can basically check the pressure and constriction of your pelvic floor muscles um, to see whether or not they're actually firing incorrectly, guys. But please don't assume you have a weak pelvic floor, especially if you're an otherwise young, healthy guy. Some things that can be indicative indicative of poor or weak pelvic floor is if, if you go from like a seating to a standing or a lying to a sitting position and you have a loss of erection, that could indicate that your pelvic floor is either imbalanced or is weak and you might benefit. And also there's been a few guys who have actually injured themselves and they spend so much time focusing on uh, reverse Kegels and avoiding Kegels because it's painful that they actually weaken their pelvic floor and they actually do end up with a weak pelvic floor. But once again, guys, this is in the setting of an injury, okay? And guys, I'm not gonna sit here and try to act like Kegels are categorically bad. No, they they have a role and they have their merits. I mean, you have to make sure you have a balanced pelvic floor, um, but there's actually some papers. And so here is a solid paper that show when actually guided by a pelvic floor physiotherapist that you can have things like improvements in both erectile dysfunction and premature ejaculation. But the key is that you're establishing balance in the pelvic floor. So it's not you're not just doing sets where you're just kegeling and constricting your pelvic floor. No, this is a detailed guide developed by an actual pelvic floor physiotherapist to actually help reverse this, okay? There's also another study up here which shows basically the same thing, but this is in guys that are basically 55 years or older, so guys that are already at risk of having a pelvic floor. And once again, guys, this study was guided by an actual pelvic floor physiotherapist, which showed that you have improvement in things like erection quality, sexual health, et cetera. So it's not just blindly doing sets of Kegels. You have to find balance. That leads us to our next section is how do we find balance? And so one of the most important things that I think that any guy can do at, really at any age is reverse Kegels. So what is a reverse Kegel? It's basically an anti-Kegel. Oh, thanks, Hink. That was super helpful. So what do I mean by that? If a Kegel is constricting your pelvic floor, reverse Kegel is just not constricting it. It's just making sure your pelvic floor is in a relaxed state. Oftentimes, you can actually feel your pelvic floor like kind of sink down and actually your lower abdomen will kind of puff out a little bit, okay? And so how do you know if you're doing a reverse Kegel? Okay, have you ever gone up to a urinal and tried to urinate and you and you actually relax your pelvic floor? That if right before you urinate, that's reverse key, guys. Same thing with having a bowel movement. You sit on the toilet, you're about to poop, and then you relax your pelvic floor, and that initiates your actual stooling process, guys. That's doing a reverse Kegel. So if you're going to practice these, I do recommend you practice over a toilet first to be safe until you get a feel for it, but that's all you need to do. Now, do you need to do like sets of reverse Kegels? I personally don't think so, but for a lot of guys starting off, it's hard. And so it's, it's hard to know if you're doing it correctly. So what would I recommend? Start off with doing like 10 sets of five to 10 seconds of just focusing on relaxing your pelvic floor. And then, you know, you can go back to whatever your resting state is and then relax it. Once again, you'll feel your pelvic floor literally like sink down. And then uh, you will also like your abdomen will actually kind of like puff out a little bit. Okay. Once you actually get the feel for it and you know what a reverse Kegel is, what's way more important is just for you to be cognizant, just be mindful of when you were walking around with a constricted pelvic floor. I had no idea that I was walking around all day with a constricted pelvic floor until I injured my pelvic floor and it hurt to constrict or contract it. And so when I would get up and walk and I'd be like, ah, oh, that hurts. And I'd have to focus constantly all day on relaxing my pelvic floor. And now I'm, I have that connection and I can just like even sometimes getting tense when I get worked up talking to you guys, I have to be like, okay, well, relax your pelvic floor because it's common to just kind of clench those muscles. The amazing thing about reverse Kegels is that if you are doing this, especially during some sort of sexual encounter, once again, number one, delays ejaculation so you can last longer. Number two, it actually allows more blood flow into specific structures, especially your corpus spongiosum and the glands. So the underside of your penis and the head of your penis 
So you actually get bigger literally by doing reverse Kegels. What I recommend is you actually practice reverse Kegels. If you do masturbate, hopefully you do it in moderation and hopefully with something like a fleshlight and not your hand. Or if you're being active with your sexual partner, you can practice reverse Kegels while you know, maybe they're stimulating with you with their hand or their mouth or even during sex where you can actually be aware of actually relaxing that pelvic floor. I found this very helpful when I'm with my significant other and I'm approaching the point of climax. I have to be like, all right, reverse Kegel, reverse Kegel. And it allows, it allows me to last longer and basically a climax when I want to. So the other thing that is extremely important is pelvic floor stretching. Okay, guys, and I'm going to demonstrate this for you, especially when I have this mic that transfers over there. I do an abbreviated version that takes about three minutes. And so guys, with each of these positions, just keep in mind that I'm holding it for 30 seconds and I do this before bed. Okay, so let's get into it. Hopefully you guys, you won't be able to see all of me. Okay, but first thing I do is I just straight over touch my toes. Okay, 30 seconds, guys. Okay. Then I get down in like, what do they call this child's pose? I don't, I don't know what this is. I don't know yoga, but I actually use my elbows and I actually push my knees out and it allows my pelvic floor to open up and I hold this position for 30 seconds as low as I can. And I get on the floor, okay, and I do butterflies. Sorry, I know you can't see all this. Butterflies for, um, once again, 30 seconds. Then I do straight leg out, 30 seconds. This leg out, 30 seconds. Then I put my leg over the other. I use this elbow to put force on my knee there. And I stretch right here. Okay, 30 seconds, stretching the glutes. Switch it right here. Okay, 30 seconds. Then I get down on my back. I put my knee up here, pull up, stretch my glutes, pelvic floor, 30 seconds, switch legs. Ooh, 30 seconds. And then lastly, this is super awkward, um, I go like this for 30 seconds, okay? And so that's my stretching routine, guys. I try to do that every night before bed. Sometimes I'm better with it than others, but it is very good at stretching your pelvic floor. It literally only takes about three minutes of your time. If you're recovering from an injury, I would recommend you do it like once in the morning and once in the evening. So guys, if you made it this far, I would really appreciate it. If you like the video, if you've learned any, anything at all, guys, please feel free to subscribe. I always appreciate that. It helps the channel grow, helps me let this know that this is worth my time. So in conclusion, guys, we really need to stop kegling so much. We really don't have to do it. You don't need to do additional sets of kegels. You're getting in plenty of kegels, guys, I promise. If you think you have a weak pelvic floor, there's pretty telltale symptoms. Go see a doctor about it, okay? Poor, you know, urinary control. Um, you can't push out a bowel movement. Um, you have poor erection quality. You can't physically tighten up your pelvic floor. If you have any concerns like that, like I said, see a doctor. If you feel like you have a hypertonic pelvic floor, See a doctor, guys. See a pelvic floor physiotherapist. Get some real advice, not just some random guy in a luchador mask on YouTube. But just please focus on relaxing your pelvic floor and focus on uh, reverse Kegels and pelvic floor stretches. They're going to be far more useful because even if you're doing sets of Kegels, if you're actively, if you're actively stretching out that pelvic floor, you're going to still have that balance in your pelvic floor, which is so key and so important. If you haven't seen my video on hard flaccid, I also talk about things like posture and how that can play a role in pelvic floor imbalance. And so please check that out. I'll put a link below, guys. If you need to reach me for any kind of like advice, you want to talk, whatever, go through my Patreon docking. I love you guys. I love the support. But if uh, like I just don't respond to messages, I get dozens of messages every day with guys with a huge paragraph of like their life story, what happened with their injury. I don't have time for that, guys. I'm sorry. I just don't. Please check out Leviathan. Uh, leviathansubs.com we have uh, like i said our vigor is back in stock it's also on amazon it's on amazon prime guys here in the u.s at least getting great reviews it's a great product i think that about covers it guys thanks for tuning in i will catch you guys on the next one peace and love